everyone, welcome back for another video. And as promised, today I'm gonna start creating training videos for, for all of the virtual assistants who wants to get started. So today I'm gonna start with how to be a business development VA or a lead generation virtual assistant. So keep tuned and for those that are new on my channel, my name is Regine Rehansha. I'm a co-founder of Strategic Assistant Services. I'm a full-time mom. I'm a freelancer, virtual assistant, and now a content creator. So please subscribe to all of my social media channels, including my YouTube, to get updates about tips and training videos about virtual assistant. Okay, so let's get started. Again, today we will be talking about how to become business development VA or lead generation VA. Now, uh, you need to learn the different skills and tools that you will need in order for you to become a business development VA. Now, with SAS, if, you're, if you saw our website, we actually offer different kind of virtual assistant to our client, but one of the skills uh, or VAs that we actually provide is business development. This is one of the in-demand uh, type of a VA that the clients are looking for. Now, if you watch all of the videos that I created, uh, I also mentioned there that business development or lead generation and email marketing is my specialty or my niche when I became a virtual assistant. So hopefully you will be able to learn and uh, you will be able to see what I do with or what I'm doing with the clients that I'm handling. All right. So that's business development VA. Now we need to understand first what is business development. So if you're new to becoming a virtual assistant, I think uh, this niche will be the easiest for you to learn. Um, uh, you're not really going to have problem when it comes to learning the tools. Uh, I'll be checking it one by one earlier, uh, the tools that are needed in order for you to become a, a business development VA. But yeah, let's define what is business development first. And yeah, uh, business development is the activity of pursuing strategic opportunities for a particular business or organization. For example, by cultivating partnerships or other commercial relationships or identifying new markets for its product or services. So business development is a department that is really needed in all types of businesses or industries uh, that the client, that your clients that or your future clients rather are in. So it doesn't matter what kind of industries they are in. I, uh, well, business development is really needed in each kind of uh, businesses, right? So that's why this is an in-demand uh, type or type of a VA or a niche that you can actually offer to your client. And yeah, so let's continue. Again, this is uh, this is about or for, uh, the best example is the client that I'm working with. So I work for a marketing agency in the U.S. wherein I usually look for different companies that we can offer our service, our marketing service. So that's what I do as a business development representative. I look for those leads or target market um, wherein we can offer our services. So that's exactly what it is. There are different ways or different um what do you call that uh to, to do the business development but one of the thing that the business development representative does is lead generation and that's exactly what i do as a virtual assistant now let's define what is lead generation so lead generation is the action or process of identifying and cultivating potential customers for a business products or services so this uh, well, this is exactly what I told uh, or, or the example that I told you under business development. So um, uh, being a business development, your main goal is to sell your product or I mean your client's product or the services that your clients provide. So in order to do that, your main uh, work is to generate leads. Leads is a target market that your client uh, wanted to reach out to 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 provide service to them or a product. But just like what I gave you, the example that I gave you, this uh, the client that I work for, they're trying to offer a marketing service. So marketing service can be offered to all kinds of industries. As we know, marketing service, uh, it, it, it has a lot of um, services that are being needed by different clients. So it can be social media management, website development, SEO, ads, uh, different kind of ads. 
and other um, other part of marketing services. So all kind of services are in need of this kind of service. So me as a business development representative or lead generation expert, I'm going to be looking at different businesses that we can provide our service. So um, it, again, it depends on the industry that your client is or it depends on the service and the products that your uh, client provides, but that's exactly what it is. Now, what are the tools that you will need to learn in order for you to be a business development VA? Um, it's not really that hard at all. When I started to become, or when I became a business development VA, I never thought that it's gonna be as easy as, uh, as it is. Well, I came from, uh, or I was a call center agent, so I know how hard, how toxic, and how, um, what do you call that, how not easy it is to deal with different customers at night. So transitioning from being a call center agent to a business development VA is totally is like a, a, a good thing for me. <laughs> That's because this is what I really would like to look for. Uh, when I became a VA, I don't want to take in calls anymore. Um, uh, that's my decision. It will really depend on uh, what you would like or the service that you would like to offer to your clients. But when I decided to become a VA, I really look for a job that's not calling. So I'm more into doing non-voice type of kind of work, which is one of them is business development. So here are the tools that you will need in order for you to become a, a business development VA. And those were Excel or Google Sheet. Apollo that I owe, which I will be discussing in a few minutes, and then social media platforms. With this, I know you already know how to use it, um, like link. Uh, I mean, so Facebook, Instagram, and for the business social media site, that's LinkedIn, and lastly, email. I'm not going to talk too much with email um, because it's going to be an advanced um, uh, topic. But here we go. Let's continue. So let's start with Excel or Google Sheet. As we all know, Google Sheet is part, well, it's part of our, uh, we use it on our daily um, uh, daily life, I, I'd say. Uh, if you're like me who manages or who records our expenses or other things under our financial um, recordings, uh, I'm using Google Sheet, to, uh, not Excel. Well, Excel is, uh, almost the same as Google Sheet, but the good thing about Google Sheet is that I can work on it um, uh, as long as I do have internet, of course. And uh, my husband can also look at our uh, at our at our financial record anytime that she uh, that he is on internet as well. So the two of us can work together or can record at the same time if we're using Google Sheet compared to an Excel. So that's what that's how we're using Excel. And I know that you are also using it. I mean, most of us uh, are already using Excel or Google Sheet in any reason. If you're not yet a virtual assistant, you might be using it for, for personal use. So let's continue. This is how I use Excel uh, for a business development VA or a lead generation VA. This is what, where I record leads. So as you know already, leads are the target market or target clients uh, that our client wants to go after or our clients wanted to offer the services that they have. So the example that I gave you, leads are the businesses that my client wanted to offer marketing service. But this time around, uh, or let, yeah, we can continue with this first. So here, I have a list here that I'm actually working and usually the clients uh, wanted to look for details such as the first name and the last name of a decision maker or a person that we can actually contact on a specific company. And of course their position, their job title, the company name, their website, and the email address of this person of uh, the decision maker. And then if the client wanted to get their um, address, you can also add it here on your um, on your file, the one that you're working for. Now, how do I get these leads? So if the client told me, go ahead and look for e-commerce businesses in, in the US only. And I wanted to get or to know who's their founder, president, CEO, the owner, 
and the head of the marketing uh, department as well. That's because we're looking for the decision maker. So this time we're trying to offer a marketing service to a specific lead or to a specific company. So we need to find out who is the decision maker of that company, who can decide and accept our marketing service. So if we're talking about um, small to medium businesses, yes, we can still reach out to the higher uh, person like the, the, the co-founder, the founder, the president, uh, those person that I mentioned earlier. That's because most of the time, if it's small to medium businesses, they're still the decision maker when it comes to um, partnering with agencies or uh, with uh, with the type of a business our client has. But if the, 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 the company or the business that our client wanted to reach out to are already big big company so this time around you will expect that the decision maker will be the marketing head itself of the business that's because we're offering a marketing service so our target person is the head of the marketing but in case your client is let's say uh, under um, uh, IT industry so if we're looking uh, we're trying to offer IT services to a specific business and the business it, uh, is already big enough, um, this time we'll be targeting the head of the IT department, something like that. So it will depend on your client. The client will tell you who will who they think is the decision maker in, in, in a specific company or the lead that you're trying to reach out. So it, again, it will also depend on how big the company or the leads uh, that you're trying to target. So this is how uh, it looks like uh, once the Excel or when I started, I'm actually copy pasting all of the details right here. Um, when I saw a specific company, I put in the company name, their website, their address, and then I look for the, the decision maker, the name and the email address. How do I do that? I use Apollo. Okay, so this is Apollo.io. This is how it looks. Uh, on the home page. Once you read, uh, you sign up, this is how it looks like. Now there's home page, but I usually go to search page. Now under search, there are two, uh, two tabs here that you can use either search under people or search under companies. Now, um, since the, the client, the client asked me to look for different, uh, leads or different companies in the U S under e-commerce. This is what I am, I'm usually doing. So that's going to be under companies. I do search under companies. Now we need to ask if you are new to being a business development VA, you need to ask relevant question to your client in order for you to know who is the target market of the client. So the client says, um, I'd like to look for um, e-commerce, uh, specifically apparel business or app apparel industry in let's say Michigan. So let's use the filters here in Apollo. So um, let's say industries, the client mentioned that's apparel. So there it is. That's part of the filters, apparel and fashion. Now the client says Michigan. So let's filter out the address, Michigan US. Now, the client didn't mention, so this time around, you have to ask the client, um, are we going to be targeting smaller uh, companies or bigger ones? So the client says just the smaller to uh, small to medium businesses will do. So you can tap, uh, I think, up to 100. We can consider them medium. Um, so when I do this filter, Apollo gave me 875 companies or leads. So this is how I look for leads. Now, um, not all of the leads or companies here are being updated by Apollo um, real time. So we still have to check it. Um, if you're going to see it here, this uh, this one is their website. IN is their link and profile for the company. So I'm going to be checking their website if it's still uh, active or not. So this this one way I can see if the business is still active or they're already closed. Okay, so all good. And since we're looking for e-commerce, we need to make sure that there's a shopping cart on their website um, or there's a checkout option in their website, meaning to say they, they are e-commerce. So we're good to go with the website. Now, how do I look for 
the uh, decision maker. Um, there's a way. Uh, however, I don't want to lose the search that I already did on this page. So I normally open another tab for a follow again. Okay, so I'll go, and this time I'll go back to search, but this time around I'll be using people to search. And since I already have the website, this is what I usually use to search for the different people under this company. Now, if you ask me, because under company, uh, we can enter the company name. Yes, we can do that. However, there are many times wherein the company has uh, or the company name has duplicates. So it's hard for us to know if we're looking at the right uh, company or not. So what I usually use to be safe is their, the company website. That's what I use to search for, for, for that specific company. So once I click on it, it tells me all of the people that are working under this company. And this time around, Apollo says there's 84 leads or 84 person working under this company. Now, um, this seems like a medium company um, according to the number of employees that are that is working for this company. So I'm going to be targeting, uh, I already saw it, the Director of Marketing Operations. So I have it here. That's Amanda Danson. And I'll also be looking for their, uh, let's say, the founder. So here under job title, you can actually see the management level. So I'll see if the owner is here or the founder. If there's none, I'll see with the C level. So there it is, the CEO. Okay. So this time around, I have, I have Charlie. Okay. When I started, I didn't know that there's actually an option in Apollo wherein you can add list. So I start when I started, what I'm doing is I'm just copy pasting the name and then putting it on my on my file, the one that I'm working. So I'm doing this like eight hours a day. That's the business development VA and that's non voice. However, if I do it like this, there's also a reason why we have to um, put in a separate uh, what to call this row or column, the first and last name. That's because right after we finish um, uh, doing the or adding all of these leads and their information here in our file, we're going to be uploading these leads to a specific tool uh, wherein we can send them an email. So an email tool, um, depending on what the client is using, we can talk more about it on a different uh, on a different call. But for now, let's focus on getting these leads um this businesses that the clients can offer their service all right so that's what i'm doing i'm copy pasting everything from apollo so i'm also going to be copy copying the job title okay and then the company name and all that's the old way that i'm doing but there's a faster way so i already found uh, one lead. So what I'm doing is you have to tick this box in here and then click on list and then add to list. Now, if this is the first time that you will be adding a lead to a list, list you can create a new one. Let's say ecom, um, and then the date today, which is oh, it's already March, first day of March. Okay, so create new list. Uh, I already created an, a list. Now. It's loading a bit. Now let me remove all of these filters so I can get back to the head of the uh, head of marketing. So this is Amanda and I'll be doing the same thing. I'll be adding her to the list that I created. This time around, I already created the list. So I just have to drop it down to look for the one that I just created. Okay, all good. Now let's say you were able to get 25 leads already. So um, how to get to the list that you just created? There it is. So there's list and then there's the one that I created with two leads on it. But let's say I already have um, quite a lot of leads in there. Let's this one. Let's use this as an example. 
So I'm actually using a free version of Apollo. And for those that are doing business development already, you know that uh, we were for a free account, we're only given like uh, 100, if I'm not mistaken, 100 free credits, meaning to say 100 emails per account. So when I started, what I was doing is that I'm creating dummy emails just for me to subscribe to Apollo and for me to be able to use 100 credit or or to get 100 email. There are still a lot of tools like this. Um, there's Zoom Info. However, with Zoom Info, it's totally the same with Apollo when it comes to generating leads. However, you really need to have a subscription in order to for you to access it. And usually being a business development VA, the client will be giving you an account or a tool to use uh, in order to do business development. So one of the tools that I'm using aside from Apollo is Seamless.ai. That one has a subscription too, but it, it works the same as Apollo. Um, I can just export uh, leads that I already created under a specific list. However, with Apollo, this is a free version, so I cannot export the list. So if I select all of the leads that I added on this list, I won't be able to export it um, again because this is a free account that I'm using. So what I am doing in order for me to copy all of these details at the same time and not doing copy pasting uh, one at a time or one lead at a time. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to highlight this from, from that to here. Hold on. It's loading. Let me go back. You need to make sure that you have to add uh, this one here. Oops, hold on. Let me just, there you go. And then highlight it until the page number is also added. So let me copy this and then I'll be pasting it here on my the file that I'm working. So, okay. This is how it will look. You can do this 25 leads at a, at a time, and then you can just simply clean it because, as you can say, the font and the size is not the same as uh, as the one that, it, that you are using. So you just have to clean it up and make sure that the email address, the email address is okay. It's already here. And then there's shortcuts um, that you can do for the first name and last name. You can just simply highlight it, go to data, split text to columns and then oh i can't see it um you can there uh you have to click space in order for you to separate it in just one go so you don't have to do it one at a time as well so that's it um the headline that i actually added or the first line rather uh, first name last name is already uh, same with how Apollo, uh, how I map it, because you can actually map it out here, depending on what the client uh, needs. Um, under table column settings, uh, here are the um, uh, the details that I actually added. However, if the client says, I also would like to add phone number, then let's see, or phone number is already added here. So if the client says, I'd like, to add the company, city, state, and country, then you just have to click these uh, these details to be added here, the visible columns. However, I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to be messing up anything. But in case the client is asking some other details that are not here on the columns that we just copy pasted here, um, if we're missing any details that the client wants us to add on our file, then just look here under uh, table column setting. All right. So that's, that's how I use Apollo. Now, um, let's give, or I'm going to give another example of how I use this Apollo. Let me just remove all, all of the filters first. Come on. Okay. There it is. So one of the client that I also handled is an influencer. And the task that I was given is to look for companies that are working with influencers, meaning to say, uh, this time around, I'll be using Instagram because I need to verify if, you know, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, to give you more context, the influencer that I'm working for is more uh, doing posting on Instagram. That's her main platform. So uh, the companies that I'll be looking at or the leads that I'll have to find 
needs to be on Instagram as well. And there should be posts in there that the this company is working for influencers like the client that I'm working with. So here is what I came up with. Or this is what I actually did. So the uh, same thing, I will be needing Google Sheet to uh, uh, put in file all of the leads that I'll be able to collect. So the client wants me to look for the brand name or the company name, uh, the brand handle or their Instagram account, the product that they usually provide. Um, and of course, the email address, the contact person's name, and their, the brand contact position is the job title. And then uh, these other details, competitor handles, um, are just other things that they want. But let's focus on the other details that they want me to look for. So um, let's say that or in Instagram. How do I look for those kind of brand? Let me just open my Instagram. This is my Instagram. If you haven't actually subscribed or followed me on Instagram, please do so. So you will get uh, updates or tips about freelancing. So that's a side way. Now let's go back. So how do I look for those kind of brands? So I usually find or Google, let's say that th this is the easiest one that I did when I started. However, it's no longer applicable when the list uh, is longer or most of the ones that I search on Google is already on my list. So this is what I did. Um, I Googled like top beauty brands in the US. So I found these, oh, there's top 10. So let's, let's work on this one. Okay. Come on. Okay. I think I click on the link, wrong link. Come on. Okay, let me just give you one. Uh, this one, uh, best beauty brands. Oh no, word beauty. Let's see if we can get the answer here. Oh, okay. So this is the brand already. So I found a brand. Now let me find out or let me check their Instagram if they're actually working for influencer. Oh no. Um, by the way, there's also other um, requirements that the client is going to ask you. Like the brands that I should be looking at should have at least 50,000 followers and above. Meaning to say those were already bigger brand that can pay an influencer like her. So this one is not qualified, but that's how I'm actually looking for brands or how I search it through uh, through Google. Now, let me go back to the example that I uh, showed you earlier or the file that I'm working. Um, uh, these are already the companies or brands that I was able to look for. Now, how do I use Apollo? for these. So I already have the brand name and their Instagram account. So an example is here, Super Goop. With 589,000 followers. So this is the right one uh, that the client want me, wanted me to look for. So the name of the brand is Super Goop. Now, uh, if you're looking at this, there's a lot of influencers under their account, meaning to say Supergoop is working with influencers. So this is another check for the requirement. Okay, so let me, now the client wants me or the specific person or the decision maker that the client wants me to look for is actually the head of the influencer marketing. Or sometimes they're called social media manager. Uh, uh, others are influencer specialists or something like that. As long as that specific person is the uh, person working with influencers, then that's the decision maker. And that's what the clients want me, wanted me to look for. So I have super group. Now let me look for their website. Because again, that's the main, um, that's the one that I'm using in order for me to, uh, to search them in Apollo. So this, this is the website. Now all I need is the URL. Now, if I have the URL, let me go to the company. Oh, this is how I do it, by the way. 
um, under company, I'll be looking for the uh, the brand. Um, we can use the brand name like Supergoop. However, there are a lot. Um, there are there is a big chance that there's uh, other brands that is almost the same as Supergoop. So if I search for it, it will give me a lot of option. But if I'm going to be using the, just the URL, it will only give me one option, just this. So once um, once I look for it, so this time around, earlier we use search field, but under companies. But this time I'll be looking or using people in order for me to find the person that I'm looking for. So let me see, there's 140 person or employees that are working for this brand. So for me to easily look for the person that I'm looking for, then I'm just gonna search influencer. There, I found three person that's working under that department. So we have the influencer marketing and global communications uh, communications coordinator. And then we also have another person that is uh, influencer marketing and global same person actually. Sorry about that. But this one, if you're uh, if you're checking it, it doesn't have an email. But the other one, which has the same job title and the same name, has an email. And by the way, with the polo, please make sure that it's color green because it means to say that email is verified. Though most of the time, there's still like a bounce rate of 10% below, but it will at least lower it down if you always look for the green, um, uh, the one that says email verified. The others is like this. It uh, means uh, there's an uh, X right here, so it doesn't have an email. The other color is orange, meaning to say the email is only guessed. And there it is. I have another person, Aaron Stone, and he is the manager, influencer marketing and communication. So uh, one way to check if they're still working, because again, we need to make sure that in Apollo, or uh, since we are not sure if Apollo is um, updating their contact list uh, real time, we're, we're, well, uh, sorry about that. Well, it's not really always real time. So for us to know that we're giving the client the, the right detail or the right person or the right decision maker, we always have to look for or check their LinkedIn profile. This is where we're going to see if these person are still working with Supergoop or with that brand. There it is. And it still says present. So there it is. Let me check the other person. Okay still present because if it's not here if you're if you're new to LinkedIn you can actually see that there is an end date that they're, they are working for a specific company so we always have to make sure that it says present meaning to say they're still working with that company so I have two person that I can actually add in my file so I already have them and I copy pasted it here uh, I have Isabel senior manager I'm not too sure if this is updated. I work on this file, I think uh, a year ago. So that's why we always have to check uh, Apollo as well for updates. But at that time when I was working, I was able to see a specific decision maker, uh, Isabel. So that's how I do it, or that's how we use Apollo. And that's uh, basically is the business development virtual assistant. There's still more. Um, the one that I mentioned or the tools that you need to be familiar with is I'm confident that you can already use all of them like Instagram and Facebook, but LinkedIn is not really that popular here in the Philippines. So if you're new to it, please make sure to sign up, create an account and uh, get all of your details in LinkedIn so you can already play with how it works. Though it has the same feature as how social media works. So you're not, I mean, it will be easy for you to use it. But the good thing about LinkedIn is it's a business social media. So it's so totally different uh, than Instagram and Facebook. So go ahead and sign up so you can at least learn how LinkedIn works because lead generation, aside from doing what I am doing, is also uh, what we call social media selling or social media outreach. So we do also look for leads using those platforms. Aside from Apollo, uh, we do use Instagram, just like how I use or find uh, those leads for the influencer that I'm working with. I use Instagram. So you can also do the same thing with Facebook. Let's say uh, the client tells you to go and find different groups in, in Facebook, um, specifically for those groups in Airbnb, 
something like that, uh, all about real estate. Because this time around, um, the client's business is real estate and the client wanted you to look for possible leads or person that uh, you can offer their marketing service to those kind of people, the realtors, the brokers, the, the lenders, all of those types. So in order for you to reach out to them, one of one of the ways to do that or one of the way to look for those kind of leads is to uh, to be part of different groups in Facebook all about real estate brokers and all of those kind of groups. And once they accepted you as a member, you can already look under the members tab and look for their profiles. And from there, you can message those leads. So that's another way of lead generation. There's a tons of way, uh, not really tons, sorry about the word, but there's different ways on how we could generate leads and how we could reach out to them. And if you're using uh, the way that I am doing, uh, like this, if you're generating leads the way as uh, the first ex the first and second example that I did, um, the most important detail that you will have to know is the email address of the contact person. So since we ha now have the email address, then the next step that we need to do in order to reach out for them is to email them. So that's going to be for a, a different topic. Um, there are clients that is not requiring you to reach out to these leads or to these people that you find. Um, that's because there's another person that's working for email marketing. But me, uh, since that's my niche, I'm actually doing both. So I do lead generation and at the same time, I reach out to the leads that I was able to find through email. And I do email automation, uh, create, I, I do create email sequences and I'm using HubSpot, Lemlist and other tools for that. But that's going to be for another training. For now, um, I hope you were you will able to learn about what a business development VA does. So this is just it is. So let's say the client um, hired you for eight hours a day. Then meaning to say, on an eight hour work Monday to Friday, you will have to generate leads. So the client and you will will have to talk. What's your target leads that you need to generate on a daily basis? So that's it for today. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you learn a lot for this first training.